Today we're uh, starting a new topic, and it's called, Did You Know? And of course, this morning we're talking about Mary, Did You Know? And uh, so next week we'll be talking about Joseph, Did You Know? Christmas Eve, Shepherds, Did You Know? And then on Christmas Day, Hey World, Did You Know? All right. Uh, there's a lot of things to be learned, and some of these things are going to just be refresher for you. I know that. Uh, especially if you've been going to church all your life. I was in church my whole life. I uh, left the Joy Road Baptist Church at two years old and started attending the Berean Baptist Church, and I remember the departure. One of the few things I remember so young. Okay, yeah, going from one church to the next church. And so I have heard this, the, the story my whole life. And, uh, but for some, it's like a new thing for them. They, they weren't brought up in church. and It's like brand new to them. And so uh, those of us who know the story, let's refresh our hearts. And uh, those of you who it's new, I'm praying that God will bless your heart. The story begins with uh, that God is a God of revelation. Now, revelation simply means that God makes known to man what man otherwise could not know. God came crashing into time with a messenger. And the messenger's name here is Gabriel. Now, I call him a messenger because that's what the word angel means. Angel simply means messenger. Now, most of the time when we think of the messengers that God sends, we think of these angelic beings, which they are. He sends them on special mission. And Gabriel is one of them that's sent on a special mes- mission. But in the Revelation chapter 1 through 3, uh, or, ch- or three, through four, 3 and 4, uh, it talks about the angel of the church at Ephesus, the angel of the church at Sardis, the angel of the church at Laodicea. Most theologians think that's the pas- pastor. And he is the messenger who takes the message then to the people. So besides uh, the fact that when we're saved, we're, we're um, called saints. And be, besides being called Saint Dennis, you can call me Angel Dennis too. I know what you're thinking. He's a fallen angel for sure. <laughs> because I'm, I'm a messenger. I'm the messenger from God. I share God's message. Now, now I, I share it authoritatively from the Bible. You see, God has given me a more sure word of prophecy. More sure than the angels, more sure than, than the prophets. He's given me the word of God. He has crashed into time and space with his word. And he's revealed himself. Now, with the case of Mary, it says in the sixth month, the angel, this messenger, Gabriel, was sent by God to a town in Galilee. Now, most of us don't know where Galilee is. This is the, the Mediterranean Sea. You can see the Dead Sea at the bottom. The Sea of Galilee is right next to the little star I have in the yellow. The yellow area is Galilee. It's kind of the reverse of the way it is here in America. We think of rednecks coming from the south. They thought of rednecks coming from the north. The Galileans were the backward rednecks of the day. All right? And so the Galilee region, there's a town called Nazareth. Now, the important cities were down in the south. Uh, Down in the south was Jerusalem, and down in the south was this place called Bethlehem, where the prophet had foretold that the coming Messiah would be born. Gabriel appears in the region of Galilee, some people would say, uh, Gabriel, you got your directions wrong. <laughs> You're going to go uh, proclaim that a king is going to be born? Royalties down in Jerusalem, uh, not in Nazareth. But he didn't have his directions wrong. He was sent by God to a virgin, a young lady, probably a teenager. She is engaged to an older man, what tradition tells us, by the name of Joseph. It wasn't uncommon for an older man to take a younger wife, uh, even in the story of Boaz and Ruth, in the book of Ruth, Boaz is probably much older. It was very, very common. And so Joseph uh, uh, is engaged to this 
young teenage gal uh, who's of the house of David, then virgin's name was Mary. We all know this part, don't we? The Virgin Mary. God sends. He's crashing into Mary's everyday ho-hum experience with an angel. And the angel comes in and, and he says something startling. It says, Mary, did you know that God is a God of favor? God is a God of favor. And he came to her and says, greeting, favored one. Greeting, favored one. This is the essence of the gospel. The gospel is called good news. Good news. Now, if you want bad news, turn on CNN, Fox News, turn, you know, go to the, the Detroit News, the Free Press, or the, the Oakland paper. Hey, listen, if you want bad news, you go there. This messenger was not sent with bad news. And, and this is so important. Christmas is about good news good news. His good news is, greetings favored one. The good news is, God is not out to get you. You, you might think that. And that way we live, oh man, God's going to get me for that. Oh boy, did I blow it. Man, God is going to get me for that. He, he, God, God, I, I find this so fascinating. In Genesis chapter 1, when God creates mankind, he's, he goes all the steps of creation, and then finally he says, and God blessed them. Do you know why God created you? He created you to bless you. And for some reason, we go around with this cloud over our head and we're thinking that God wants to zap me. <laughs> he doesn't want to zap you. He wants to bless you. And he wanted to bless Mary. And he says to Mary, he says, greetings, favored one. This is the message from God. God sent his messenger and the angels just to go between from God and say, God says, you're favored. Now, Mary, you don't deserve it. Dennis, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Why? Because we're all, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible calls that when you fall short, you mess up. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God is a God who blesses and favors us in spite of who we are and what we've done. Isn't that marvelous? When I come to this Christmas season, it's like, whoa, God loved me, even knowing who I am and what I've done. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? He appears to Mary and says, listen, you're favored. And then this is what he says. He says this powerful slide. The Lord is with you. I want to tell you something. The Lord is with you too. He is. You know, sometimes we don't feel like it. And I, I don't know that we always feel the presence of someone. Um, I came into the room, sat down, and one of the grandkids, sneaking in, hands and knees, real. I didn't feel their presence until they jumped up and went, boo! <laughs> right? And I go, out of my skin. You don't always feel a person's presence. But we have this promise Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Even when you don't feel it, he's with you. And the angel, the messenger from God, God is saying, listen, Mary, I want to bless you. I'm going to shower my favor on you, even though you do not deserve it. And I am with you. That's a marvelous. This, this, that's good news, if you ask me. Isn't that good news? That, that, that's great news. Now, but she was much perplexed about the words and she pondered what sort of greeting this might be. What is this? I mean, when was the last time you had an angel come crashing into your experience, huh? From what I gather about the crashing into the experience of people in the Bible, one of the first things they always have to say is don't be afraid. Angels are so awesome and powerful that when somebody looks upon them, the first thing they have is fright. They're dominating creatures of God. They're so grand that we feel so small. She's much perplexed, not by his appearance, by what he said. Uh, wait a minute, you're saying this to me? Like, who am I? Isn't that what you say also? 
out of all the world, come on, who am I? The words perplex these, these words were just perplexing to her, and she pondered what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, oh, remember I just said, don't be afraid? <laughs> That's what he says to her. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found what? Favor with God. That's what this revelation is all about. That's why God gave us the Bible. And so we might discover that God favors us. He loves us. He has a plan for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to use us. And when we're all done, he wants to take us home to be with him. Isn't that great? This is good news. Hey, Mary, did you know that God is a God of revelation? And that God is a God of favor. And Mary, did you know that God is a God of miracles? God is a God of miracles. He says to her, and now you will conceive in your womb. You will conceive. There is going to be a conception uh, that's going to take place. And, and notice what he says, in your womb. Well, she's a virgin, okay? And so he's saying here, you're going to conceive. All this, all this stuff here is very theological and very important. You're a virgin, you're going to conceive, and it's going to be in your womb. This is not in vitro. You know, in vitro, the word vitro means glass tray, where, where they, they, they take the egg out of you, and then they somehow, well, I don't know how the doctors do this, but they unite, you know, the, the, the seed and the, the egg together, and, and uh, then they plant it back in. He said, no, 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 this is not in vitro. This would be in vivo. The Latin word vivo means inside you. So there's some kind of divine operation that's going to go on inside her so that she's going to conceive inside her and she's going to bear a son. Now, if she's a virgin and this is going to happen, it is like possibly, conceivably, a freaky thing that could happen that two eggs could somehow merge together and start the process. The only problem is... Women only have X genes and men have X and Y. And without the X and Y, you could never have a son. So if even a freaky thing like that were ever to happen within the person, she'd have a girl every time. A miracle have to take place for her to have a Y. You see what I'm saying? This passage is telling us this is a miracle going on here. You're going to conceive and you're going to bear a son. And it's going to be a normal delivery. It's a supernatural conception, but a normal delivery. And you will name him Jesus. I love this part. Because in the name of Jesus, that name Jesus is the powerful name. And the book of Acts, they preached in the name of Jesus. Everywhere they went, they went to, you know, today often people say, well, that was a God thing. I think we need to stop saying that and say it's a Jesus thing. Because the power is in the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Well, why is, why is this name Jesus? The word Jesus means Jehovah saves. He's the Savior. God saves through this child. Jesus will later say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. I am the Savior. You're going to conceive, and you're going to have a son. You will name him Jesus, and he says, and he will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. Your child's going to be God's son. He's going to be divine. He's going to be God of God, the very God. And the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He's royalty. He's a king. So that even in his death, they nailed above his head on the cross, king of the Jews. He's a king. And he will reign, whoops, I, he will reign over the house of, of Jacob and of his kingdom, there will be no end. He is an eternal king. Oh my goodness. Here's what I notice. Mary says, uh, how can this be since I'm a virgin? She said, whoa, stop everything. You lost me as soon as you said, I'm going to conceive. You kind of lost me there. I'm a virgin. I've never known a man. How is this going to happen? That's when we learn, hey Mary, did you know that God is the God of all power? We call this omnipotent. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High, 
That is God. That's a favorite expression in the book of Daniel for God sitting on his throne. He is the most high God. The power, there's going to be a power exerted from God on his throne and it's going to overshadow you. It's going to cast its shadow upon you. Therefore, he says, the child to be born, you're going to have a natural birth, but a supernatural conception. The supernatural part of the whole thing is that she conceived. The birth of Jesus was very natural. He was born like everybody else was born. But he was conceived in such a way that the child was holy. Now the word holy means to be apart from sin. There's no sin. This is the only sinless child to be born ever. You see, Adam was created sinless, but he wasn't born sinless. God created him sinless. And he fell. And when he fell, the whole human race fell in him, and the whole human race was considered to be sinful. So that everyone that was born from him was contaminated with his sinfulness. So much so that in Romans 5 it says that my original sin was with Adam. When Adam sinned, I sinned because I'm part of the human race. We're all sinners. But somehow the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit so that the conception was without sin so that when the baby was born, he was truly pure, holy, sinless, the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. He will be called the Son of God. God's very own son. I'm a son of God by adoption and and through regeneration and new birth. He is son of God by birth. Wow. He is the true son of God. God, the second person of the eternal trinity, joined with humanity so that he is the God-man. The person is God The natures are God and man. So that God is experiencing everything that I experience. Isn't that amazing? In the book of Acts, there's a little subtle expression where it says that God shed his blood. Acts chapter 20. Read through that passage, you'll find it. The antecedent of he shed his blood goes back to God. That union was so great that when Jesus died on the cross, God was experiencing our death and God was dying for us. Those those natures were so joined together that he took my place. This is a unique, this is a miraculous thing. The power of Almighty God overcoming her. And he says, then he adds this, and he says, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age. You see, she's old. And he says, she's also conceived, going to have a son. And his name's going to be John the Baptist. He's your cousin. And this is, she's in her sixth month, and, 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 for she was barren. You see, God is the God of all power. He is the God, actually, who does the impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Our God, you see, th- this is our hope. God is the God who does the impossible. I don't know what you're facing. I tend to put God in a box. And I kind of limit God as to what he will do. I like, oh, I don't want to pray too big because what if he doesn't do this? It's like, oh, I'm doubting that God can do this, right? So I put him in my little box. One time I did a drama. We had a drama team at the church and we, we did a drama and I said, I need a box. The guy came out with a box. I said, oh, no, no, I need a bigger box. Another guy came out and he had a bigger box. And I said, no, no, it was bigger than that. And, I, and another guy brought out a box. Okay, and it was, it was a big box. Finally, a guy brings out a refrigerator box. Okay, and, bring it, and I said, no. And the guy finally says to me, what do you want to put in this box? I said, I want to put God in the box. <laughs> you see, you can't put God in a box. All things are possible. You know what? It's I put him in the box. For nothing will be impossible with God. I'm the only one that limits God. I doubt what God can do. 
God is also the God of promise. Mary, did you know that? Oh, I think she did. Mary then said, here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your words. What you've said, I'm taking those as a promise. Do it. You are the God of, you're the God of promises. Here I am. Just do it. Just do it. She doesn't know what she's got in store by saying that. Even though she's favored and blessed and all of that, having Jesus as her son is going to bring upon her a lot of hardship. She's going to be accused of being unfaithful. She's going to be accused of having Old King James, a bastard son, that Jesus wasn't a leg legitimate child. She's going to be shunned by her society, oh, but she's blessed. You see, blessing doesn't always mean easy. You, you getting that? She's going to watch her son die on the cross. That, that's not easy, folks. But she is blessed above all women. She gave birth to the Savior who saves everyone from their sins. She stands there and says, let it be. I accept your promise. I, ex I accept the price tag that goes with it. Then the angel departed. Angel took off. She's on her own now. So what do we, what do we know? I mean, we just learned what Mary now knows, but what do we know? What do we know? We know that God is the God of revelation. He's still speaking today. He speaks through this book. If I want to hear him, I mean, I know that he speaks in all creation. The Bible tells me that in Romans chapter 1. All creation declares the glory of God. I know that he, he speaks through providence, through history, and the events that unfold. He, he speaks through that because the book of Acts tells me that. But I know those things only authoritatively because the Bible says so. This is where I know. This is my link to God. This is where God speaks to me. This is his revelation in the age in which I live where God comes crashing into my experience and he speaks to me in the word. God is still the God of revelation who is still speaking to you and me today if we will just listen for his voice. He's a God of a favorite. He loves me. I want you to say that. He loves me. Say it again. He loves me. Now change it a little bit. God loves me. Come on. God loves me. Now one more time. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Well, we could almost sing that, right? That's, that's a song. Too often we just think of that as a little song for little kids. But the truth is, Jesus loves me. Jesus loved Mary. Jesus, God, the angel brought the message, favors you. Listen, Jesus, God, all the angels, they favor you. They watch you. They care about you. They love you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Miracles. You know, God really surprises me. That's what I mean. She's surprised. Whoa, <laughs> what kind of salutation could this be? God is still in the business of surprising us. You all know how it works. You pray. And then, you know, God gives you the answer. And you go, whoa, I can't believe that happened. Well, initially, you doubted it. You prayed it kind of in, in a hopeful way, hoping it will happen, not really expecting it to happen. And then God does it, and boom, he really surprises you. He surprises us in all kinds of ways. In the book of Peter, it tells us that we're to entertain strangers because some have entertained, in, in, in the process of being hospitable and entertaining strangers, some have entertained angels unaware. The person you entertained was actually an angel. And I know that back from the, the book of Genesis. Abraham entertained some men who were actually turned out to be angels. Okay. He surprises us. God is the God of all power. You know, he empowers us. It, and the Bible tells us that we have the same power of the, that ro raised Jesus Christ from the dead. 
I don't know what you're facing, and you just say, you know what, I need God's strength. It's available. You just have to tap into it. You've got to plug into it. You know, we have a Christmas tree in our living room now. We put it up this last week. And it's the artificial kind, all right? And uh, so you put all the pieces together, and then the lights weren't on. Well, the lights don't come on until you plug it in, <laughs> right? And you can mess with those lights all day, but if you don't plug it in, listen, all power, our God is all powerful. You know why we're so weak? We're not plugged in. If I plug in, I have power. I have power to overcome anything with him. He's the God of the impossible. He defies. When I say, I don't think it can happen, he says, oh, yes, it can. I don't think he will. Oh, yes, I, I might. He is, a, the, he is the God of the impossibilities. Never rule out God and what God can do. He's the God of promises. Listen, when I read the word, and I read in there that God, and he gives me any kind of promise, and I say, God is a God, he's promised he will do it, and I throw that promise up to God, Lord, you promised you will be with me always. Help me sense your presence. He will. He will. He's a God who assures me. He assures me. What's our response? Well, I'm hoping that our response to Christmas, you know, what, what do we know? It will be just like Mary. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Let it be. Bring it on. Bring it on. Oh, bring it on. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we've come to learn about Advent and about our Savior, and we have that you are a God of revelation. You're a God of all power. Lord, you're a God that, that loves us and favors us. Lord, we've been learning these things and some of these things we, we've known and today we've reacquainted ourselves with them. Perhaps there's someone here who says, this is new to me. I, this is new for the first time. Jesus is the Savior. I want him as my Savior. I want to have a God who is all-powerful and to be able to tap into that power. Lord, if there's someone here today who says, I, I don't know Jesus like that. Right now in the quietness and the stillness of this moment, they would just pray and say, Lord, be my Savior and God. Take away my sins, for I believe in you, that you were born, you died, and you were buried, and you rose again to save me. Because you first loved me, Lord, I now love you back. Because you gave your life for me, Lord, I will now live my life for you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.